Welcome back to another lesson on nonlinear dynamics, a lesson that's really a continuation of where we left off last time. So recall that last time we solved this two-dimensional dynamical system where we've got dx by dt dependent on just x and dy by dt dependent on just y. We called this dynamical system uncoupled because each differential equation only depended on its own variable and not the other variable. x and y weren't coupled, they were separated. Our task in this video is to take the solution of this dynamical system and analyze it under different values of a. I'm going to write out the solution here again for ease of reference. Now with this analysis, I hope to introduce some important terminology that we're going to carry forward later on in this series. Let's begin our analysis with the case where a, the coefficient on the exponential for x of t, is less than negative 1. Let me draw a phase portrait to help with the analysis, with x and y being represented by each of the axes. If our initial condition, our initial point, is on the y-axis where x is 0, then as time goes on, x isn't going to change. Our system isn't going to deviate horizontally because if I start at x not equals 0, then x just becomes 0 by extension when you plug that into our solution. Now, y is still non-zero when we start on the y-axis, if we don't start at the origin. But based on the solution for y of t, our dynamical system would then gradually converge to the origin as time goes on. That's because as time approaches infinity, this negative exponent exponential will approach zero, and our dynamical system will then approach the origin, which is our lone fixed point. So trajectories on the y-axis all converge to the origin and look like this. But what about trajectories on the x-axis? Well, same idea. If we start on the x-axis, y0 is 0, which means y of t is 0. Because a is negative, then as time goes on, x eventually also approaches 0. So our trajectories on the x-axis don't deviate vertically, but all end up converging to the fixed point that is the origin. Here's the interesting part, though. What if we don't start at either of the axes, like if we start somewhere up here? Well, in that case, because a is less than negative 1, then that means x is going to approach 0 faster than y. Just think about it. I've got the exponential of negative 2t or negative 3t. It should make intuitive sense that the exponential of negative 2t or negative 3t will approach 0 more quickly than the exponential of negative t. This means that on the phase portrait, this point is going to be attracted to x equals 0 more quickly than y equals 0. That is, it's going to be attracted to the y-axis more than the x-axis. So the trajectory of this point will have a stronger quote-unquote force pulling it horizontally and a weaker force pulling it vertically. If I complete this trajectory, then this is what it'll look like, eventually converging to the fixed point of the origin. The same principle applies if I start anywhere else. If I start here, for instance, my trajectory is going to be pulled more strongly towards x equals 0 than towards y equals 0, just like it was before, because the exponential on x of t decreases faster than the exponential on y of t. So once the trajectory gets rapidly close to x equals 0, it's going to slowly start heading towards y equals 0 and will eventually reach the origin. Let's consider the next case where a is now equal to negative 1. In that case, both x and y will approach the fixed point at the exact same rate. The trajectory starting at the x and y axes will approach the origin just like before, but trajectory starting elsewhere will approach the origin in what's basically a straight line, since the coefficient on both exponentials in x of t and y of t is negative 1, so a pretty simple case overall. In the next scenario, our a is still negative, but it's now between 0 and negative 1, so think of it as the inverse of the very first scenario. Again, trajectories starting at the x and y axes will approach the origin. However, this time the trajectories that don't start at the axes will get attracted towards y equals 0, so the horizontal axes, more quickly and more strongly than towards x equals 0, or the vertical axes. The reason for this is that the exponential on y of t will approach 0 more quickly than the exponential on x of t, because on y of t the exponent is negative t, but on x of t it might be negative 0.1t or negative 0.01t, so it'll take a longer time for x to approach 0 than y. So ultimately, if we're starting somewhere here, the vertical pull, the pull in the y direction, is going to be more powerful than the pull in the x direction, because the exponential in the y direction decreases faster. We can follow this logic and continue to draw the remainder of the trajectories in this phase portrait, which will look something like this. Our penultimate scenario is where a is 0. When a is 0, our solution x of t is just a constant equal to its initial value x0. 
Y of t, on the other hand, will continue to decrease towards zero because it still has the e to the negative d. So our trajectories will all approach the x-axis, meaning that the x-axis now becomes an entire line of fixed points. And finally, in our last scenario, a is now greater than zero. This is an interesting one, which we'll break down part by part, starting with trajectories on the y-axis. So for trajectories on the y-axis, x is initially zero, which means that x of t will be zero by extension. So in that scenario, we just have the trajectory on the y-axis, which will eventually converge towards the origin just because y of t is an exponential with a negative power. For the trajectories on the x-axis, however, y is now initially zero, which means that y of t will be zero by extension. Because a is now positive, x is going to continue to increase and diverge away from the origin. So on the x-axis, the trajectories will move away from the fixed point. But what about trajectories that aren't on the x or y axes? Well, in that case, we know from our solutions that y of t is going to continue to approach zero. So the trajectories are all going to approach the horizontal line of y equals zero or the x-axis. However, because x is going to increase to infinity with time, the trajectories will continue towards either negative infinity for x or positive infinity, depending on which half of the phase portrait we start on. So now we've discussed all five scenarios with the constant a. Let's now revisit these scenarios and define some important terminology for two-dimensional dynamical systems, which will come in handy in future videos. For the purposes of defining our terminology, we'll call our fixed point our origin, x star. Sometimes I might put an arrow over top of the x star to denote the fact that this is a point as opposed to a singular value. The first term we'll discuss is a stable node. In scenarios 1 to 3, our fixed point x star is basically a stable node. It's a point which sucks all nearby trajectories towards it. In the special case of scenario 2, where we've got straight lines in our phase portrait converging towards the origin, x star is then called a symmetrically stable node because trajectories converge towards it in a manner that is symmetric from every direction. Trajectories converge at an equal rate from all directions. Now, a star is another name for a symmetric node. The next term we'll talk about is a saddle point. This is what applies to x star in scenario 5. A saddle point is a point that's stable from one direction, but unstable from other directions. Why is it called a saddle point? Well, think of a saddle, which I'm going to draw here. If I let go of a ball on the major curve connecting the two tips of the saddle, so right over here, then that ball will move around and slowly converge towards the center of the saddle right here. So this is one stable trajectory of the saddle. But on the other hand, if I drop the ball anywhere else, then it's just going to fall off, so the trajectories will be unstable everywhere else. So this is why x star in scenario 5 is a saddle. It's stable in one direction, but unstable in all the other directions. This leads me to the next few terms involving manifolds. Staying at scenario 5, the y-axis is our stable manifold, because trajectories starting on the y-axis converge towards the fixed point. Technically speaking, a stable manifold is a set of initial conditions with which trajectories approach the fixed point as time approaches infinity. In contrast, the x-axis is an unstable manifold. Trajectories starting on the x-axis run away from the fixed point as time goes on, but what's more is that if we reverse time, the trajectories look like they're approaching the fixed point. Technically, this means that an unstable manifold is a set of initial conditions for which trajectories approach the fixed point as time reverses, as it approaches negative infinity. So you can't just have a trajectory running away from the fixed point to call that trajectory an unstable manifold. The trajectory has to go back to the fixed point as time reverses in order to qualify as an unstable manifold. Only the x-axis in scenario 5 follows both rules. Let's talk more about the different types of stable fixed points. When we're dealing with one-dimensional dynamical systems on a line, there was much less variety because those systems were simpler. But now that we're dealing with multi-dimensional systems with their added complexity, we can actually have different types of fixed points. The first type is called an attracting fixed point. In scenarios 1 to 3, x star is an attracting fixed point because trajectories that start near x star all approach x star as time approaches infinity. In fact, x star is a globally attracting fixed point because trajectories don't even need to start near it. They can start anywhere, but will eventually approach x star as time goes on. x star attracts all trajectories on the phase plane, as you can see in scenarios 1, 2, and 3. 
There's also a formal mathematical definition of an attracting fixed point. This definition states that x star is attracting if there is a positive number delta, such that the limit as time approaches infinity of x of t equals x star whenever the initial value of x is within a delta of x star. That is, any trajectory that starts within a distance delta of x star is guaranteed to converge to x star eventually. So if I start within delta of my fixed point x star, then x star is attracting if any trajectory within this delta is guaranteed to converge to x star eventually. Now the trajectory can still leave this delta boundary, but it must eventually converge to x star. The second definition I'll go over is that of Lyapunov stability. In scenarios 1 to 4, x star, so the origin, is Lyapunov stable because in all of these scenarios, trajectories starting near x star stay close to it for all time. They don't just get close to x star as time approaches infinity, they stay close to it forever. Now the wrinkle here is that scenario 4 is also included. The reason is that if a trajectory in scenario 4 starts close to x star, it still remains close to it. It doesn't venture further away. It either gets closer or maintains the same distance. The trajectory doesn't even have to converge to x star. It just can never be pushed away from it when it starts out close. That's the important distinction with Lyapunov stability. The formal definition I've written here for a Lyapunov stable fixed point. Trajectories that start within delta of x star remain within a positive number epsilon of x star for all positive time. That's basically the definition. So if my arbitrary initial condition is within a distance delta of x star, then if that initial condition stays within some finite epsilon of x star all the time, then x star can be called Lyapunov stable. Now there's some special variations of fixed points that have some combination of Lyapunov stability and attraction. A fixed point that's not an attractor but is Lyapunov stable can also be called mutually stable. A good example is the scenario 4 that we described previously. A fixed point that is both Lyapunov stable and an attractor is also called asymptotically stable. So x star in scenarios 1, 2, and 3 is asymptotically stable. And finally, if x star is neither Lyapunov stable nor attracting, then it's just considered unstable, like in scenario 5. Anyway, that should do it for this video. We've talked about analyzing a two-dimensional linear dynamical system and defined some important terminology surrounding the fixed point of this dynamical system. In the next video, we'll talk about classifying two-dimensional linear dynamical systems with some linear algebra methods. If you enjoyed this lesson, feel free to like and subscribe. I'd like to thank the following patrons for their support. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.